Now, Ben versus Eubank, the big fight live. He can't win. He can't win. And I can't lose. Three years ago, uh, he prepared like a champion, and I can't knock him for that. Anyone that he prepared for a champion, but this time, I prepared like a champion, a true champion. And you will see. Welcome to Old Trafford. It's been a beautiful autumn day here in Manchester and now it's clear, dry and cool for Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank on their Judgment Day. The pictures from the dressing room. Nigel Benn in the referee's room, in fact, just below me with his trainer, Jimmy Tibbs. In the meantime, in the Manchester United home dressing room, Chris Eubank, unbeaten, tapes up and prepares to go to work. Good evening to you all. We waited nearly three years for this fight and now the talking is just about over and it's right around the corner. It's very hard for me really to put across the atmosphere we have here at Old Trafford tonight. It is absolutely exceptional. Over 40,000 people inside the stadium. They've paid over £2 million for the privilege of being here on a great sporting night. This time last night in Manchester, it was pouring. We had thunder, we had lightning, we had the lot. Tonight, it's cool and it's very clear, around about 50 degrees, the temperature out there. Tremendous sporting occasion. I'm delighted to have some heavyweight assistants up here in the studio as well with Lennox Lewis. Lennox, welcome. You watched that uh, Best of Enemies programme with great interest, didn't you? And you feel that uh, the mental battle between these two is going to be absolutely crucial. It has to be really crucial. Not only the physical, act, the fact of getting into shape, but the mental is very important. What about fighting in the open air? You had to do it in Cardiff uh, last week, a bit later on, it was one in the morning. Is that a factor we should consider? It is a factor because on the way coming in, I was, I was freezing, and I know if you're not used to it, and it depends out on each boxer and how it affects them. We'll talk more later on, but uh, looking at uh, these two characters, Ben and Eubank, totally different. They're both uh, very good fighters, they're both world champions, but really they're the similarities end. When they get together, inside or outside the ring, it's an absolutely lethal cocktail it really is potent and uh, the old flames really fire up around about 50 degrees the temperature out there tremendous sporting occasion i'm delighted to have some heavyweight assistants up here in the studio as well with lennox lewis lennox welcome you watched that uh, Best of Enemies programme with great interest, didn't you? And you feel that uh, the mental battle between these two is going to be absolutely crucial. It has to be really crucial. Not only the physical act, the fact of getting into shape, but the mental is very important. What about fighting in the open air? You had to do it in Cardiff uh, last week, a bit later on, it was one in the morning. Is that a factor we should consider? It is a factor because on the way coming in, I was, I was freezing, <laughs> and I know if you're not used to it, and it depends out on each boxer and how it affects them. We'll talk more later on, but uh, looking at uh, these two characters, Ben and Eubank, totally different. They're both uh, very good fighters, they're both world champions, but really they're the similarities end. When they get together, inside or outside the ring, it's an absolutely lethal cocktail. It really is potent and uh, the old flames really fire up. so much scum in boxing, I'm sorry to say. But you, that's the way you've got to be. You've got to be, it's like dog eat dog. You can't be being Mr. Nice Guy in boxing. 
if you're going to dislike me, dislike me for the right reason. And there are no right reasons for disliking Chris Eubank as far well as I'm concerned. I'm quite a good guy. Test him, I, I really do. It's, it's no joke, you know. I do, I, don't, I can't stand him. Nigel, you're not the man you've portrayed yourself to be. I've always said you were the fraud. But I don't mean to be impolite. Eubanks ultimately has the style to beat him, plus he's beaten him already. So it really depends on each one's preparation, who really wants it the most. Mm. But you're, you're going for Ben the Outsider? Yeah. OK. Let's uh, see what the thinking is down at ringside, and our man down there covering all the action at ringside on this very big night is Gary Newbar. <laughs> yes, Jim, and a lot of big boxing names down here, but pride of place to Frank Bruno. Now Hello, you've gone Gary's. for world title three times, you've Very been stopped. So. Yeah. so the big question now, you've had a week to chill out, are you going to carry on or are you going to retire? I'm not too sure, Gary, I'm going to chill out a little bit more. You, you know, must have thought you about can't it. can't make it over in a week's time. And I've been boxing about 11 years now. You can't make, you're going to fi finish boxing the week. So I'll let you know exclusively a, a couple of months' time, son. Of months. Your secret is safe with me, you know. After Christmas, after Christmas. <laughs> OK, now, don't sit on the fence now. Is right. it Eubank or Ben? It's got to be one of them, and why? It's be Ben early or Eubanks later on, because um, Nigel's a very, very dangerous guy earlier on. Eubanks is a slippery, good boxer, you know what I mean, like, and he can, he's like a fox, you know, so I've got to go for Ben early or Eubanks later on. Barry McGuigan, who are you going for and why? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I originally thought if they could stick to their tactics that it would be either Ben uh, in the early rounds or Eubanks in the late rounds, like Frank. I think tactics are going to go out the window. Too much pride at stake, 40,000 people here. It's got to be Eubank and it's got to be six or seven rounds. He's got a better chin. I'm seeing six or seven rounds Eubank. Right, Don King. Yes. Wonderful atmosphere here. It's a great atmosphere, Gary. This is a fantastic evening here at Trafford Stadium in Manchester. I love Manchester, and I see that Manchester has responded tremendously. And this is exclusive on ITV. In the voice of boxing, I'm talking to Gary Newborn. And I'm just delighted to say that Michael Nunn is anxious to challenge whoever the victor be tonight. But the fans will be the real winner here on ITV and right here in Trafford Stadium. Right, now, Michael Nunn, WBA super middleweight champion in the world, you meet the winner. I know you don't care who the winner's going to be, but I want to know from you who you think it's going to be. Well, like I said before, I don't know who's going to win. The best man's going to win. I'm just looking forward to fighting him, and you know, I'd like to say hello to everybody here in the UK. I mean, they've been great. I'm just looking forward to coming here to fight in front of these great fans. Do you think if Eubank wins, he'll go through with this and meet you? Well, I hope he does. You know, I hope now I can get a, a signed agreement stating that he's going to fight me. And I mean, that's what uh, boxing is all about, the best fighting the best. And let's uh, put it together and let's do this. OK, Michael, let's go to John McCurick about the betting. Now, first of all, John, there must have been good odds about the weather. We thought it was going to rain, but it's lovely here now. When outside has turned up, no rain in Manchester. But this is Britain's biggest betting fight ever. Over £2 million is reckoned to be staked. And they, three years ago, when they were betting, Ben was odds on. Now it's odds on Eubank. 15 to 8 on, they're saying Eubank. Earroll 6 to 4 against Ben. Double carpet, 33 to 1 against the draw. But if you reckon the Dark Destroyer is going to flatten Eubank in the first round, 50 to 1 you can get. But if the, if the simply the best is going to prove it once again in the ninth, it's a 40 to 1 chance. It's odds against the fight going the distance if it does. 7 to 2 Eubank to win on point, 6 to 1 Ben. But now judgment days turn into judgment night. If you've had a bet, you're in the ring. You're ducking, you're weaving, you're punching the blows, blow by blow, punch for punch. And I can tell you one thing, it's not just the fighters who are going to suffer in there tonight. Well, what about that? John McCreek, Jim, or Don King? What a Don double King. act. Yes. This is fantastic. <laughs>
Yeah, that is some match going on down there. Of course, every day is every day's fancy dress day for John McCurry, isn't it? Um, but massive interest. I reckon there must be about uh, 16 or 17 million of you out there waiting to see the outcome. One or two people hedging their bets down there. It is split right down the middle. It'll be very interesting to see uh, the support that both fighters get when they emerge in round about four or five minutes time. I'll tell you what though, the way in at uh, the Crown Plaza Hotel in the centre of Manchester last night was absolutely chaotic even by boxing standards. But uh, Eubank came in right on the limit. He always does that. Bang on 12 stone. It was a, a packed room. And Nigel Benn, even uh, with, with the hat and a bit of heavy jewellery around the neck, was just uh, one pound lighter at 11.13 at last night's weigh-in. And now just a, a little word with you, Lennox, on, on that. They weighed in last night. Now, my feeling is that... Uh, Chris Eubank will be up around 13 stone now. Would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, you definitely need some weight going into a long battle because you realise that you, that's what you're going to be working off. So it's, it's good to have a good weight on when you're going through a big fight. Do you see this, though, as a crucial factor in, in the fight? The fact that Nigel Ben has to move up to make, to make the weight and, uh, and Chris Eubank has to come down and then zooms up once he's made it? I think uh, in the later rounds it should show, you know, w which affected you most. Right. Well, just looking at the, that now, there's not really much between them. Eubank probably in his fighting prime at 27, but of course, uh, Ben, a terrific amount left and a terrific puncher. We must never forget, really, what a devastating puncher Nigel Ben is. And uh, words, of course, that Nigel Ben might be a little bit chinny. Well, he hasn't gone down for something like three and a half years, so it'd be very interesting to see if Chris Eubank manages to change that tonight. Well, tremendous out there. Both fighters are very nearly ready to come out and uh, join the massive crowd and there are the shots of them inside the dressing rooms once more. It's going to be very important for them to get warm. Nigel Ben has been very secretive. Chris Eubank has done all the publicity stuff. Is he going to be mentally strong enough to retain his unbeaten record and to take Nigel Ben's WBC title? We shall find out. We'll be back with the action from Old Trafford very shortly. Welcome back to Old Trafford, a beautiful night, and Chris Eubank and Nigel Benn are now all set to enter the Old Trafford arena. Let me just tell you about the titles at stake here. Of course, Nigel Benn is the WBC champion, Nigel Benn. Those are the, the rules, the most important rules that are going to be uh, applied tonight. No three knockdown rule in effect here. Uh, no standing count as well. The various boxing bodies have, have slightly different rules. A mandatory eight count. So if a fighter goes down, it means he definitely gets a count to at least eight. And the bell can only save a fighter in the last round. So the referee, the British referee, Larry O'Connell, will continue counting except in the last round. And uh, the titles uh, that are at stake here, the WBC champion is, is Nigel Benn. Of course, his title is up for grabs. Chris Eubank is the WBO title, and late today it has been decided that Eubank's WBO title is on the line as well. They're all set to go. Let's join our MC. He is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to welcome, making his way to the ring, the WBO super middleweight champion of the world, known as simply the best, Chris Eubank. Chris Eubank emerges, looking very, very relaxed, flanked by promoter Barry Hearn. It's a long, long walk from the new home Manchester United dressing room all the way up the side of the pitch and across to the ring, smack in the centre circle here at Old Trafford, or Trafford Park, as Don King loves to call it. This. A supreme test, really, for Eubank, who has admitted he's only done just enough to win in recent fights. He said after the last fight, 
he wouldn't want to go through anything like that again. That was three years ago. And now he prepares to do battle with the Dark Destroyer once more. Well, waiting at ringside, as always, are your big fight commentators, expert analysis from Jim Watt. And first of all, let's say a very good evening to the maestro, to Reg Guttridge. So there he is then, coming out into the main arena to be seen for the first time now. So pull up your ringside seat with us here at Old Trafford. It's choking excitement, about 41,000 people here. Jim Watt and I have seen a few in our time, but I tell you, the atmosphere here, Jim, takes some beating. The first biggie at Old Trafford. Yeah, I've been to a few open air shows, Reg, but I've never seen or heard anything like this. The atmosphere is really tremendous. So this fellow now, he's worked out in the warm-up room where the footballers warm up there, and, uh, well, as you can see, he's already sweating heavily. And, of course, for him, it's got to be a designer sweat, that's for sure. Now, is he going to do it the vault over the ropes or not? There's some talk that he just might not do it on this occasion. This is what the Americans, a buzzword for them is uh, focus, and that's what he's doing now. Now, let's see if he's going to do it uh, or not. Yes, I'm sure he will. Now, he did this before he even appeared on television, so there, although he calls it a bit of an act, uh, he was doing it from the start as well. Absolutely loved it. There it is. The ego has landed. Absolute chilling confidence, Jim, really, isn't he, uh, Eubank? Yeah, it really excites himself up, Reggie. His life might be one big act, but I think he's beginning to believe it, and he's never been beaten, so until he's beaten, he can keep calling himself simply the best. Absolutely. And now, ladies and gentlemen, making his way into the ring, the WBC Super Middleweight Champion of the World, the Dirt Destroyer, Nigel Ben. Chimes were happening there for Ben. Eubank was spinning round in the ring, twisting, turning. It looks as though he's doing a bit of ducking and diving. But this fellow is equally as confident. I, I thought that their condition at the weigh-in ceremony was tremendous. And remember, they've moved up from the middleweight division now to super middleweight, so that's six pounds different from when they fought before. 12 stone at Eubank. Eight pounds difference, I should tell you. Well, I must have got two off while we were watching the heat with this show, Jim. Twelve stone exactly, Eubank. It really is incredible. For the eighth time, he gets it right down to the last ounce. It would have was it of the odds here, isn't he? 11-13, Ben. Who some may consider a really genuine middleweight rather than the full super middleweight. Both championships, as Jim Rosenthal was saying, are now on the line. It's possible, well, you never know, we may never see champions again holding uh, two uh, versions fighting in a British ring. Michael Nunn, the WBA champion, is already in the ring, has shaken hands with Chris Eubank and dying to meet the winner. So the Dark Destroyer then. They really, I don't think he really needs too much protection, do you? And a uh, little bit of window dressing, isn't it, with all the security? But on the other hand, you can see for yourself, though, it's really packed, this crowd. 
He's in a much brighter mood than he's been in the build-up to the fight, but he's actually enjoying this, I suspect, Jim. Well, How are the nerves when you're coming down the aisle like that? Well, I'd like to see Ben just a little bit more focused, Reg. He's got too many smiles for people. I mean, this is the, the biggest night of his career. But look at this, you think this was after the fight, making his way back to the dressing room. I'd like to at least go back as totally focused. I'd like to see Ben the same way. I mean, the nerves should really be making, you should be thinking about one thing and one thing only, but Ben seems to be smiling at everybody and actually in a good mood. Well, I suppose, Jim, if you're getting a million, you've got to be in a good mood. And remember that uh, poor old Eubank's only getting 850,000. He didn't mind taking the shorter end, but he wanted to get the fight on. And remember, all right, it sounds a lot for one night's work. Uh, well, we all know that, but it's years of preparation, the taking punishment, doing everything the hard way. They deserve every penny they can earn, these fellas, in the fight game. The underdog from a betting point of view, then. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to rise for the playing of the national anthem. Please welcome to the center of the ring to lead us the internationally acclaimed violin virtuoso, the one and only Nigel Kennedy. Brighton, England. 
his weight, and even a 12 stone or 168 pounds. His outstanding record includes 35 wins, no losses, one draw, with 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the colorful former WBO middleweight and current WBO super middleweight champion of the world, known as simply the best, introducing the undefeated Chris Eubank. on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing white trunks with blue trim, and he hails from Beckingham, Kent, by way of Ilford. He weighed in at a ready 11 stone, 13 pounds, or 167 pounds. His tremendous record includes 37 wins, only two losses, with an impressive 32 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the former WBO middleweight world champion and current WBC super middleweight champion of the world. Tonight making his fourth defense of his title, please welcome the hard-hitting champion known as the Gut Destroyer, introducing Nigel Ben. Once again, the referee in charge, now to give instructions, Larry O'Connell. Well, there it is, all the talking's done now, and the rundown by Larry O'Connell, amateur international in his time, remember him very well, the Fitzroy Lodge Club in London. So there's, there's a millions of viewers now being seen around the world, and uh, Showtime in USA are taking this. Come out and fight at the bell, man, the best man win. Well, there it is now. It's the red alert time, Jim. And I'm glad it's got normal corner men here because Eubank, with the Godfrey's and the monocle and the build up this week, I thought maybe Jeeves would appear in his corner. It looked a bit like Bertie Worcester at times. Well, there's the focusing, Jim, that you were talking about there. Now, if the fight is half as good as the last time, three years ago in Birmingham. And having the, the close shaved haircut for the first time now. Well, I don't know whether it helped him to slip punches a little bit. Remember, both world champions. I think from the first meeting, Reg, Eubank is the one who's been doing most of the improving. I don't think Ben's really got any better at all. But Eubank now has the confidence of being a champion and he started far more positively than I would expect it. Condition tremendous, Jim, isn't it? That extra pounders that they put on since the last time, they've carried it well. Well, especially Eubank, I think that's going to have a big uh, bearing on what happens tonight. Eubank will be closer to 13 stone here, Ben will just be around about the 12. Yeah, remember it's so much bigger and stronger. Jim, it's 28 hours now since the weigh-in. I know you don't particularly agree with that the day before. It's a medical rule to stop them dehydrating to make weight. See, Ben's attitude just seemed a little bit casual as he came into the ring, smiling and bobbing about. Not as though he was coming to do battle. A oh, little ticking off there for Eubank, and hit on the break. And the referee was pulling him apart. He didn't, he didn't announce break, of course, but it was a bit obvious. Looks though Ben's trying to go looking for him more, isn't he? Trying to, well, not cut the ring size down, Jim, but to stop Eubank going walkabout. Well, Ben has to come forward, race to be you know, in any way positive, I, I look for success, but he, he can't do it in a reckless manner. He's got to have a bit more control than he normally shows, and I haven't really seen what his control. Not a tight defence as he moves forward here. He loves what he calls a tear-up, doesn't he? The old soldier. Four years, 256 days in the Royal Fusiliers, and he counted every one of them. 
But at least he's not wasting punches in the first round. One of Ben's problems, he runs out of steam because he wastes punches in the first few rounds, puts too much power into punches that are missing. So at least, although he's not tight, he's, uh, he's controlling his punch rate a little bit in the first round. I tell you what, there's been some good shots landed in this opening round as we come up to the close there. Slightly low, not too much of a moan there from you. And there it is, giving it the old pose again. Yand is back to the corner and back to the cares of the office this far. He really is an incredible guy. Well, we may not even bother to go and sit down there and uh, try and Ronnie Davis <laughs> keeps a straight face, as I said, he's, he's the G's of the outfit. He calls him the, the pit bull terrier. There's the, the corner. And Maximo Pereira is actually the New York cab driver. There he is from the Dominican Republic who first trained Eubank and he had five fights in Atlantic City, just in the little prelims. Now, if you've been there, there's Jimmy Tibbs, who's worked against Eubank now. Uh, this is the fifth time, uh, yeah, the fifth time now. He's going to try and get a win. He still hasn't beaten him. Second down. Bit of a calm confidence going on, Jimmy, in both corners, really, I thought there. Round two. Yeah, well, a fairly quiet opening round, but uh, you can see the sharpness in Eubank's moves. He has total concentration, everything tight and then fully concentrated. More full concentration. He's admitted in the past that his early road work has not been that good, but uh, he's really fired himself up and worked himself very hard on the road for this one. Ben, of course, a very diligent trainer anyway. See, Ben always has trouble against awkward, cagey opponents, and uh, Eubank is certainly that. Ben's not getting his punches off quick enough, Reg. He's moving forward, bobbing and weaving, but not getting the punches off. Amazing part with the uh, Eubank, really. He's only had one knockout or stoppage since he last fought Ben. That's amazing. That was John Jarvis, the American. South African, Sugar Boy, Malinga, Von Essett, Tony Thornton, the postman, Ron Carlos Jimenez, all went with the course. And Lindell Holmes. Eubanks had a lot of poor performances, Reg, but you always get the feeling he can do better if he decides to do better. He just seems to do enough. I think uh, Ben will have him fired up. Oh dear, that little rabbit punch will have to be stopped. I think Eubank wants to wipe away the thought of that kind of dreary draw that he got the Irishman Ray Close in, uh, in Scotland last time up. Ben's getting them off a bit quicker now. Yeah, and the, the Manchester crowd are enjoying that too. What a turnout it is. It's all the celebrities, ex-champions, current champions. The newspaper lit literati, of course. Yeah, Ben's doing better in the second round here. A minute to go. the sharpest we've seen Eubank now, probably since he last fought this one, eh? Yeah, well, as I say, I think the Ben fight made him realise just how tough this business was, so there's no way he's not got himself properly prepared for this. He does absorb a punch so well, Jim Eubank, doesn't he? It's true he's been down, although the last time I agree with him, I thought it was a bit of a slip on water on the canvas has got to follow the punch he tripped over a left hook as well see Eubank's never comfortable leading off attacks he likes to pull a man forward onto him and help him with counters I can tell you it's uh, pretty chilly here now in Manchester. These fellas have warmed up well. They're getting off to a pretty bright start. Get the 
feeling in the bulk of the crowd behind Ben when he throws bombs like this. Yeah, I, th I think that a lot of people, uh, I mean, I quite enjoy the arrogance that Eubank brings into the ring. I think it's all part of the showmanship, but some people don't like it, so they want to see him maybe knock down a peg or two. But a good right hand lead from Eubank. See, Ben has to pay more attention to defence. If you look up now, he gets clipped. Instead of covering up, he goes on the attack. Yeah, there he, you know, he's, he likes all the blasting stuff. He likes living on the edge all the time, doesn't he, Ben? That little bit of danger. I mean, he did, he's done it the hard way. He's the only Briton that's gone abroad like that and won two World Championships Jim, in America. Doug, Doug DeWitt, around Barkley. Yeah, well, Hunnigan did it as well, I suppose, yeah. but they, uh, Not quite as intense as the first battle yet, but it's, it's, with every round that passes, it's heating up more. Ben, a bit more positive now, trying to move forward with the punches. So that's a dangerous looking right hand you banks throwing. We don't have that cauldron heat, of course, in indoor arena, Jim. I wonder you fought in the open air. Does it make that much difference? Yeah, it does actually, especially in October. I mean, it's not so bad in the summer months, a, a little pleasant breeze. But uh, in the month of October, it can feel the cold up there in between rounds. Oh, that's a low punch. Quite rightly. I don't know whether he's going to take the point away. It hasn't, it hasn't signified that, Larry O'Connell, no. Well, I'm not too many of them. That could interfere with the family allowance. Yeah, Ben's been caught low as well now. They're both been won. Well, that's that's fair. But right, I know they've got their foul-proof protectors, but the damage can be done. You can get some pain with that, Jim, can't you? So we're not really seeing good clean punches landed. A little bit scuffed. I think they're both paying each other an awful lot of respect. Ben's beginning to take some chances. But uh, you bank been very, very careful. Right from the, the bleachers, as they say on the stage, through the, the stands here, the back of this uh, Old Trafford ground, it's cheering everything. Round four, WBC, WBO versions of the 12 stone or 168 pounds championship of the world. And uh, well, as you've lived in a cave for the last few years, Eubank in the yellow trunks and uh, Ben in white. Oh, yes, another low punch there. I think he might take a point away there. Second warning, he says. No, he's being a bit lenient there, Larry O'Connell. Maybe the fact that they both have got a warning is, is making Con a little bit more lenient, but another one and he'll take a point. Two American referees, uh, uh, sorry, judges, Carol Castellano, first woman actually to judge a world championship uh, in Britain with Lloyd Hannigan in the second fight with Jorge Vaca. Chuck Hassett, Manaheim. California and the old veteran from England, Harry Gibbs. Referee Larry O'Connell wouldn't score if it went the, the 12 rounds. Oh, good right hand punch there, Jim. Right above us here. He's hurt you back. He looks as though he's. Eubank was actually had the nerve to call him on there. I don't think it was hurt, Reg. There wasn't a change in his eyes. He stumbled after the punch. It was a good shot, but he was actually waving Ben on. Yeah, he's been a bit cheeky there, wasn't he? Yeah, but a good right-hand punch it was. That would have knocked his monocle out, Jim, I'll tell you that. See, this is where Ben must keep himself under control and get the punches flowing. You see, he's marching forward, but he's taking too long to get the punches off. No questions, the best we've seen you, Bank. Do you agree? 
Yeah, the, the sharp pitch. I thought he missed quite a bit in the previous round, but uh, you can see he's thinking and his movements are sharp. But Ben's getting through with the shot. It's a right hand lead again, landing. But Ben just seems a little bit ragged to me, and as the pace slows down, he's going to pay for that because that's when Eubank will begin to catch him cleanly. So this is really ragged stuff from Ben, not a great deal of control. Yeah, you remember, Jim, he said he didn't prepare properly last time and was overweight the day before the fight, and I think he's in the best shape he could possibly be, and maybe he won't have those stamina doubts that he had last time. I don't think it's so much stamina doubts, Reg. He blows himself out. He, he, he does too much work in the, the first six rounds of a fight. He doesn't think about a, a campaign as a 12-rounder. He trains hard enough, but you have to pace yourself. And he's certainly pacing himself better, and he's not wasting so many punches. But ben definitely really, fancies Lockton. Yeah, it's really picking up now, Reg. But he's still very open, taking a lot of chances. Livening it up a bit now, isn't it? And uh, well, he's still getting the slow walk back to the corner there. We're back as many he can. And only 60 seconds now for these fellas to tell him what it's all about. Ronnie Davis on the outside of the ropes. Jim, the overhaul, look at that again now. Well, that was a nice oh, that shot. Was a punch. Yep, see his legs, they're not stumbling, Reg. He's looking back, and this is what he called uh, Ben on. He was never really badly shaken by that punch, but nevertheless, it was a good shot. Yeah, see, back he goes. He was actually pulling away from the yeah, punch as it landed. That's Maximo Pirey. Let's, let's have a look at Barry McGuigan, the former world featherweight champion, unofficial scorecard there. Well, there are. You see, he's considered the, the bustling punches of Ben just puts him a point ahead, Jim. Yeah, he's not far out. You, you Banks looking sharp, moving sharp, but he's not getting his punches off too well. At least Ben being a little bit of aggressor and, and throwing more punches. Round five. Oh, now it's really livening up now. We had to do that. Love to tear up Nigel Ben now. That suits him. He wants to draw you and get the swapping punches with him. Well, it exploded into life there, Reg. All that See, heavily you... nurtured hate is coming out now, isn't it? See, Eubank never sustains an attack, Reg. In all the fights I've seen him, I wonder if he'll try and sustain this one. Ben reckless again, Reg. I mean, yeah, this is calling him on. That's this crazy. This is crazy. When the fellow stopped him before, he knows he has the power to hurt him. Why is he doing this? Now, nodding to the corner as well there. He's certainly listening faithfully, I think, to corner man Jimmy Tibbs' advice. And we're showing out to him as well, Ben. gone in the fifth it really is living up now to expectations don't you yeah, think yeah this is what we expected Reg, but Ben is the one doing all the silly things here I mean he knows himself he doesn't have the greatest chin in the world he's been shaken badly a couple of times he's been stopped a couple of times you think he would keep it a bit more protected Midway then through the round. Oh, right above us there, you might tell you. I had to draw in my breath there with that body punch that uh, Eubank landed. But he's as strong as anything, actually, uh, in the stomach pain. See, a fair bit of miss. This has been a good round, excitement wise, but a lot of missing. But we're not really getting the punches home cleanly. Well, inevitably, it has to slow down a bit. They, they, that's too many punches go too soon in that round there. Well, I have to say, Reg, I don't think Michael Lanner will have seen anything to worry him so far. I mean, it's not really been classic boxing. Well, same goes for James Tony, but he's not quite in the picture yet. The, the man who has insulted both of them. 
you have to give it to Benny, he has total commitment. I mean, once he sets off on an attack, no matter what comes back his way, he sticks with it. Right, right to the last, whereas Eubank likes to back off and start again. He really likes to walk in and have a bang up. It's an exciting fight in our duel, Ben. I wonder what uh, Marco Nunn does think about that. Here's Gary Newbon with him. Michael, what do you think of the fight so far? Well, you know, the fight's very exciting. You know I mean? I'm getting excited sitting there ringside watching both of them go at it. Uh, I'm just looking forward to fighting the winner. Do you think Nigel Ben is being rather reckless? Well, no, nah, not really. I mean, what he's doing, he's giving, uh, he's giving a lot of hard shots. He's taking, he's taking some good shots, too. I mean, the fight's pretty, uh, pretty even right about now. And what about Eubank? He seems to be pacing himself well. well no doubt about it. That's what uh, Chris is trying to do. He's trying to let uh, Nigel come out and, and uh, exert himself then, try to pick up the later rounds and uh, try to get him out of there late. From what you've seen so far, who do you fancy to win this? Well, believe it or not, I don't know who's going to win the fight. Like I said, I'm going to leave it up to those two individuals. I just want to fight the winner. So there he is, getting a real seeing two there, isn't he? Well, Under the Jimmy Tibbs, the corner man. In the opposite corner, the changing, the trainers are changing there each Second round. Two. Maximo Pere round comes in six. one, and then Ronnie Davis for the other. Round six. So the, the replay, Jim, looks as though it's going to live up now to the first fight, doesn't it? This yeah, well, it's catching fire now, Reg. I mean, there's been some, un some untidy punching, not too many good clean shots landed. But they're both paying each other so much respect, although Ben, far, the, far, the more reckless of the two. But the excitement level has really lifted, and, and now it's started living up to, the, to what we expected. Eubank not being able to pinch those rests that he likes to do in a fight is a... He's being forced to trade. Well, Eubank knows he's the stronger of the two. Oh, some good punches there, Jim. Ben has some mouth damage. Yeah. Yep. Warning for a low punch there. So. One point taken off. So that's, uh, that's a blow for Ben. It didn't seem that low, Jim, did it? It's, well, it's just the fact that he's been warned a couple of times already, Reg, so, I mean, what's the point in warning if you're not going to carry out your threats? That's yeah, exactly. What's happened. Early on, they were, well, not only south See, of the that's border, another those one, punches. Actually, right? he's, just, he's just landed another punch low then. Yeah. He might actually complain about it. He's going to have to take a bit more care. Eubank starting now to put some stuff. A good right hand from Ben, but Eubank looking for some power on the right hand now. See, once the pace slows, Ben could find himself in trouble because his defence is very loose. So there's a minute to go in the sixth round now. Oh, it's a good exchange, Jace. He certainly sharpened up his boxing a lot, Eubank. He said at uh, some press conferences this week, you're going to be surprised with my box. Oh! Shoved him out of the ring there. Well, to give him all the time he wants to get back, I would think he's got to get back unassisted, and he's managed that OK. Good job there's a wide uh, apron to this ring, otherwise he'd have been on our laps there. He bend it through with a left hook. I don't know if that one's troubled Eubank. No, he's taking it well again. A bit spiteful, isn't it? Well, this is now where, where Ben should fancy the job. When he has to go looking for opponents, he struggles a little bit. The Eubank's there all the time, so it's a type of fight that suits Ben. A good right hand again from Ben. Oh, but Jimmy absorbs him so well, you bang. I'm waiting for him to go over from those punches. He just waved his arm as if to say nothing's happened. Well, he could have fooled me. Looks as though Jimmy Tibbs is a bit pleased with his man there. And uh, now then, let's have a look at this in replay now. See if we can see this low punch. Oh, oh yes. South of the border, south of the equator almost. But, uh, and this is the bit, Jim, where he pushes him through the rope stick. Well, as I said, right above us. <laughs> Whoop, there he comes. 
Well, you don't often see the towel flap, and certainly on a cold night like this, I tell you, there's a little nip in the air, and with this uh, fight mob around here, this, if there's a nip in the air, they drink it. That's a bit of an old-fashioned there from Maximo Pere. I didn't know a bit about that, because my father and uncle were quite well known seconds. Round seven. Oh, well, well done to you, Bank there. He pulled away. He noticed that he slipped. Uh, he could have easily taken advantage of that, Jim. Point up for you, Bank. Eubank's not delivering his punches very well, Reg. His, his timing seems slightly off. I mean, Ben's given plenty of chances. I know Ben's moving his head from side to side as he comes forward. But Eubank's timing just that little bit off. See, and then he's getting caught. He's missing with his own leads and getting caught with the counters. I expected the opposite. Eubank to be the one with the sharp counter. trust each other close in like that, do they? They're not in fighting too good. Still trying to use the uppercut occasionally, are you back? See, it's, I mean, it's really obvious how poor Eubank is at coming forward. When he misses with one punch, Reg, he's got nothing else to do. He's got to start ducking towards the floor and pulling away. He's, he's attacking boxing is really very poor. He depends on the opponent leading off so as he can counter. The old scribe's called milling on the retreat in a way like this. But a couple of times Eubank's gone on the attack. If the first punch misses, then he has nowhere to go. He has to start ducking, diving and grabbing hold. Minute to go. So there he goes again, misses with a punch, nothing else to do. Just covers up. No, scrappy around this, isn't it? in the ninth round the first fight remember Ben certainly paced his campaign a lot better this time he hasn't wasted quite as many punches taking chances but not throwing a lot of silly punches keep out of the picture as much as possible here. And that was a slip. No, that was a slip. So round eight then. Fellas have both been in the melting pot a few times. Now, this last quarter of the fight could really decide the winner. How have you got it, Jim? I've got Ben in front, Reg. I, I think Eubank has a lot to do here. He's not boxing well at all. Moving around sharp, they're looking good, pulling plenty of dangerous looking faces, but his punches are not as sharp as they should be. And a lot of the action's been scrappy, but Ben has been just that little bit busier. You know, inside, he, he's been throwing little clips around the ears. Early on, I thought Eubank was boxing exceptionally well, but he, as you say, he's got a bit ragged now. He started well, he had a good first round, he looked very sharp, and I thought that's... But, but you see, he never sustains good action, Eubank, he's never been able to do that. I don't know uh, if it's the, the type of training he does, he looks wonderfully and superbly fit, but he never sustains any action, so you wonder about his stamina. See a lot of missing again. Ben, and when he misses with punches, his edge, he doesn't quite know what to do, he's like a novice at times. And he has to start running or dipping towards the floor. See, if Ben misses with a punch, he comes back with another one, but decent balance.
It's a pity now they're doing a bit of clutching now. It's, it's falling up in patches. It's looked a very exciting fight. The excitement's here, Reg, but I don't think it's quite the intense epic that the first battle was. Just is a little bit scrappy. We're not seeing enough good, solid, you know, good quality punches landing. Now it looks as though the moves have been choreographed a bit, doesn't it? 13th consecutive WBO fight list for you, Bank. Well, Eubanks produced a lot of poor performances, Reg. So, I mean, it's quite possible that uh, now and again he just can't raise the gallop, and he has a lot to do tonight. His boxing is very low-key here. And Ben still has plenty of steam left. Wondering now how the newspaper critics have got this around the ringside here. Sponsored, of course, by the Daily Mirror, more newspapers this fight. You have to hand it to Ben, the natural fighter, Reg, when he's tagged, he just comes storming back again. Eubank sharpened up a little bit just in this little half minute here. And there's the, the countdown for the eighth. So it's uh, Frank Bruno, still a hero despite the loss to Alex Lewis. What does he have to say here? Who do you think is doing the better of the two fighters so far? I think Ben at this moment is not in time because I thought it would have been um, Ben early and Eubanks later on, but it seems like Eubanks is the one who's getting tired the quick earlier, you know, Gary. Eubanks seems to be making hard work of it when he attacks. He does it, he's more slippery if he just ducks and dives around the rings and jab him out. It's easy for me to say, but Ben is a warmonger. He'll hit you and he'll break in half of anything he hits you, but he's falling into Ben's hands here, you know? Okay, Frank, let's get a view from Lennox Lewis. I think Ben's winning the fight right now. He's doing, he's doing the right things and he's making Eubanks miss. I think um, he's hitting him with some good shots and clear shots well, as well. Well, that's quite incredible. And he's that keeping the pressure on, which is well, very Frank important. Bruno, we're talking here. Eubank was not in his corner, just standing over, staring boxing. at us all at the ringside, and particularly Bruno. Into the ninth round. Well, I think it's now time for Ben to go back to the old Nigel Ben and just really give it what he has now, the last third of the fight. He can afford now to really raise the pace. It's been, by his standards, a good, cool, steady pace. He must have plenty left. Just keep that chin down and raise the pace. Eubank doesn't like working at a pace. And I think the time is now right for Ben to raise it. Well, this is a round of Edward in last time. Ben actually ended but, up being but, kicked in the neck there. Yeah, but Larry O'Connor was quite abused by that. He's, he's keeping it good humour going, that's something. Not for long, the armistice was short-lived. Good left hook from Ben. I mean, a little bit sneaky stuff from Eubank. He put out the touch glove and threw a punch at the same time there. Don't expect that from him. Plenty of the old needle here, just the same. Scrappy in parts. And how do you reckon a man like Eubank did? We keep saying it. I mean, do you know when he was sparring with Chris Bart, who's also a world champion for this fight, he actually broke off to answer his mobile phone. Or in his case, it's got to be a poker phone. And he's been known for a lot about holding and hitting there. Yeah, that, that'll go against him with the judges. See, Ben is still the one when they get up close, he's throwing the little clips. They're not good, clean, solid punches, but they're scoring points. That's what came in the front, and Eubank holding again. He's talking to Ben too, you notice that? Well, not a good performance from Eubank so far, Reg. Another couple of rounds like this, and he's going to be looking for that knockout, because he's going to need it. Ben looking a little bit ragged as well now, Reg. 
see no defence. He's been a couple of times in the past has just suddenly fallen to pieces. There's not much in it, Jim, is there really? No, there's not. Ben actually looks a little bit as though one of the earlier punches has had an effect on him. His legs look a little bit wobbly. Well, certainly Ben seems to be satisfied with his night's work, and now you're back being led back to his corner there. Not that he was in any trouble, but Ronnie uh, Davis is a little bit tired of him standing there doing the posing bit. Let's have a look at the fall over here now. Yeah, see, a lot of the action has been scrappy. See, he missed with a punch, down he went, and oh, got the heel yeah, behind him. Put him on the heel, though. Oh, that's, that really is an unusual shot, isn't it? But the, ref, the, the referee was quite abused by see, it all. This is where he gave the hand raise and then threw the punch at the same time. Not really gentlemanly conduct, was it? Well, I think that's to Oh, Tur's to orders. <laughs> if he can throw a punch like the trainer, he'll be all right. So the, pit, the pit ball is his nickname by the bank really means business for the tenth round. And would you put Ben in front? Yeah, still Ben in front, Reggie. I feel you bank has a lot to do. He tried to sharpen up in the previous round there. But he's not boxing well. He's taking too long to get his punches off. Up close, he's not throwing any punches. I mean, it's, it's not quite as good a battle as the previous one. A lot of scuffling and untidy stuff. But uh, the events made it obviously exciting. Oh, this is Oh, good left hook. That's a beauty. That was a good shot from Ben. That was the one. Yeah, he's stumbling a bit there, Eubank. The legs have started to betray him a bit. Remember, he went down in the Michael Watson fight, where he was being beaten quite clearly. And then came back, of course, for that tragic end for Watson in the last round. Well, we thought by now we would see the strength of Eubank beginning to take control, but that hasn't happened. It doesn't look anything any, any stronger than Ben does. And that was a lovely left hook. Looks as though he's recovered okay though, you make them. He pulls himself together pretty well. Well that was a beauty there. It was bang in the chin, he took it well. As we said before, an excellent chin. See, he's not landing cleanly, he's on punches, Ben's managing to keep below them. He really is full of fire, isn't he, Ben? He's, he's actually enjoying the fight. to go in the tenth. And once more now, two American judges, and one from England, Harry Gibbs. Oh dear, those rabbit punches are not to be uh, tolerated for too long, I don't think, by the referee. Ben's allowing Eubank to come forward in this round, but uh, still Eubank not really being very effective. Half a minute. I'm doubting now, Jim, whether Eubank has really uh, ever got himself just in front. I think Ben has always just nipped in front there. There's not much in it, though. It's a bit seesaw. I've got, I've got Ben in front, Reg. I always think he's been busier. And, and the time that counts, he has the last word in a lot of the exchanges. And I really feel Eubank not had the accuracy that you usually expect from I've got Ben in front. Well, at least he's going back to the corner, just those 
few seconds earlier in the change of trainer working inside the ring. He's showing out to, to Frank Bruno there and answering him too, uh, Eubank. Let's have a look at this in replay, Jim. Was, uh, see, he's dipped low, he's just looking for the shot. Bang right on the chin, look at them. You can see the way his head shoot from that punch, but still he's looking back towards Ben, he's taking the punch perfectly well, but that was a scorcher. Well, the towel in there it is there, he's got Ben in front, Barry McGuigan's unofficial card. First time he's actually done this uh, on ITV. Seconds out. Round 11. 11th round. 41,000 not proud here. Well, you back, I think, the complaining about a low one again there. I don't know if it was low edge. I was unsighted. I was right, was right behind Ben. You've got to remember, there was a point deducted. From ben, could that make a difference? If it's that close, what do you think? Well, I would still have him in front red, even allowing for the, the point. But you might must realise, surely his corner have told him he has it all to do in the last couple of rounds. Yeah, he's just got to hang on to that slender lead, doesn't he? But ben doesn't want to let him come forward at this stage in the fight. He's strong, as we're saying, about close to 13 stone by now, no doubt. You don't want Eubank coming at you. snap seems to have gone out of Ben's work, Reg, he's, he's feeling the pace. Yeah, well, remember he was tagged by Otto Govano right in the dying seconds of the 12th round when he fought him, that's, uh, could it happen again here? You never know, it's all on the knife edge really, isn't it? Yeah, he wants to just force the punches out now, Ben, he's obviously feeling the pace. Keep that chin low. Nice little chopping right hand from Ben. It's a pity that at times has been a bit more hugging than hitting, really. Yeah, it's been an untidy fight there. It's not been quite as good as the, the previous encounter, but you find that quite a lot. But uh, the atmosphere and just the, the, the event has made the whole thing. Oh, good left. Yeah, see, Ben's leaving that chin. Back he comes when he's hurt. He's always the same. That's what makes him so exciting. Minute to go. Well, I think Eubank's done slightly better this round, Reg. Uh, ben looks to me as though he's really feeling the pace. Trying for a long time in Tenerife. That's a chancy football type chance here in the stadium but here we go here we go it's all scuffling well Ben isn't he that's the thing Jim they made it all be hurtful punches but he keeps on throwing them in I think uh, Eubanks nicking this one Reg good right hand from Ben but he's looking very tired very lively running back to the corner then Looking for that drug of applause, he loves it, doesn't he, uh, Eubank? But I'd, I would hope that the, the corner men are showing more concern now. Because, well, I wonder if it could all hinge on the last. I doubt it, Jim, but there you go. It's how the American judges see it, and of course, Harry Gibbs. I'm just trying to get Ben fired up for a final round here. Well, biggest round of your career, Tiffany, saying there. And isn't it so? He, even he can smell that, well, it could be close. 
And I'm wondering how you at home have got it. Oh, Ben, a lovely way of hand to start the round, then two more. Ben, what a big round red would just put the clincher on it, no problem for Ben. He had a lazy 11th round. Two banks slipping on the canvas there. Left hook. Two banks slipped on the canvas and Ben made, took full advantage of it. This is the round res we've been waiting for. This is what we expected. Blowing hard, Ben, but he's still throwing more than his share of punches. Minute gone. In a close fight, Red, you don't want to allow the opponent to do all the leading off, and that's what Ben's doing here. Yeah, not a particularly good round so far. Well, I mean, he's landing the same amount of punches because Eubank's missing so much, but you don't want him to be looking the boss. They're both fairly exhausted here. Well, it seems to be drawn decisions are all the vogue these days, isn't it? Guerrero Chavez, Eubank close. I hope that uh, they can find a winner here anyway. See, see Ben again, he looked very lazy in the 11th round, and I don't think he's got an awful lot left, but here he fires back again. He's going to have to spring into life here. Oh no, he's out there shouting at one another. Just look at that with a minute left. A little bit of abuse going on in there, I think. Ben's absolutely convinced him that, that he's won this. Well, I don't know if he thinks he, he's not an up in front race to coast. He should be thrown back here. And Eubank won the 11th on my card, and he's doing all the work in this one. <laughs> you won't try the kid around too with putting his hands up there as if to say to the judges, this is my part, man. What a, I mean, a couple of cocky characters here, aren't they? There's a lot of untidy boxing all the way through, but this has been a good round. It's always carried that little bit of drama and argument and debate, and maybe that's what the decision will do. Long wait now for the three judges' cards. The supervisor, Ray Clark for the British board. And the boxing board of control the steward there is uh, Tom Henry, local MP and the shadow minister for sport. Not that he's involved with the decision at all. Uh, watching now, then they're both being hoisted around the ring as we expect. And here's a man, it's his unbeaten record now. Finally been uh, beaten. Don King, Barry Hearn, co promoters. And I still think that uh, Ben's just shaded it, don't you, Jim? Yeah, I think he's nicked it there, Jim. All, all the way through, apart from the last couple of rounds, that fairly tightened things up there because he was very lazy in both the 11th and 12th rounds, allowed Eubank to do a lot of work. But up until then, I would have been in front. Uh, the point that he lost for the low blows could have a bearing on it, but I would still say he's got enough just to be maybe that one round in front. Well, just leaning over Barry McGuigan there, he's got it a draw. And I was talking about, well, I hope they find a winner, but, uh, well, he's sat on the fence right at the finish there, I think. I think it's close, Jim. Yeah, it's close. It's close, and the two rounds obviously closed it up at the last two rounds because Eubank did a lot of work, a lot of missing. If it went Eubank's way, it could actually be that low punch in the, the minute. Deducted. Michael, who's won this fight? Well, uh, the way things look, I mean, it's real close. I mean, uh, Come on, this one, uh, well, you know, Nigel Ben, uh, the last couple rounds, I think he kind of picked it up, but uh, the fight's very close, and uh, Michael Nunn just wants to fight the winner, you know. I mean, it was a good fight, it was a great fight. And, uh, you, must have, you must know who's won this fight. Well, no, not necessarily. Opinion. I mean, you know, this is boxing, man. we got to wait and see what the judges and the referees. Well, go ahead. I think the fans won, Gary. I think this has been a great fight here, man. 
And you're just waiting for the judge's decision because Michael Rodney Fine, this has been a great fight. I told everybody that intangible would not would be in with These guys don't know who's won. What do you think is gonna happen? Well listen, I've got to tell you, I don't know. I've never seen such a tight fight. If I'm gonna go for anything, I'm gonna go for the draw. That's really? my honest opinion. That's that close. I can't divide these two. I really can't. Well all that talk uh, I suspect we're gonna Okay, we're gonna get a we're gonna get a verdict. Well, while we're waiting for those final scores now, let's have a look at this final stuff, you know. They're actually cuddling at the end of the round there. They've made it up at last, but not here. It wasn't that convincing last round. But this is where the you chat was going. They were doing the commentating there, weren't they? Yeah, but it's now I'm going on. I know they're untidy around, but you might get a lot of work there. Could it possibly be a third time up with these? It is a draw or not. I'm getting, I'm getting the vibes that it may well be. It must take us a long, Reg. You know the score at the end of the round. I don't like when decisions take too long to be announced. Makes me feel nervous. Here's the MC. Well, I think he knows he's won it. He's been tipped off, I should have thought there, Ben. We've all seen an outstanding 12 rounds of boxing. No matter who the winner is, they both deserve a round of applause. Outstanding efforts. Chris Eubank and Nigel Ben. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, here are the score totals. Judge of ringside, Harry Gibbs, scores about 115, 100. 13, Chris Eubank. Two points for Eubank. Carol Castellano scores about 114, 113, Nigel Ben. One each. This looks Jared like being a draw. Chuck Hassett scores about 114 to 114. Even a draw. The decision yes, is it's a draw. A well, draw. We thought Ben just stole it, Jim, but uh, we weren't a bit surprised by a drawn decision then. Would you believe, is it going to be a third time up? He's not too pleased with that, Ben, at all. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, both of the boxers... But uh, I wouldn't go against Harry Gibbs' judgment, and very rarely have. But he gave it two rounds. That was the, the one point taken away from Ben there that he gave to you, you back to win the fight. Well, a very, very close thing. It, uh, watching those rounds very closely, it was pretty tough to work out who had uh, seized those rounds. Lennox Lewis alongside me. I think the two of us, Lennox, looking at it, we, we felt that uh, Nigel might just feel a little bit aggrieved about that. I think no, no boxer likes a draw, definitely, because they work so hard, sacrifice so much, and then all of a sudden they're waiting for their glory and it's not there. Mm. I thought the fight was very close. I thought it was very, very, very close. I would hate to be a judge. Mm. It might, Nigel Ben will look back and he'll look back at the video, won't he? And he'll see that uh, there were a few low blows there and he'll see the point deducted and he will view that as absolutely crucial. Yeah, that, that may have been the key point in the whole fight, just that point being taken away because I thought Nigel just had it by a tinsy bit because he was getting off with some clean shots, but, you know, they both boxed tremendously. And at the end there, of course, uh, Chris Eubank staged a, a fair old rally and the last two rounds were very, very important for him. Chris Eubanks is a very, very smart boxer. He's got a great style and he used his brain in the ring definitely today. Mm. I mean, that second time round, you know, there's, <laughs> there's a win for Eubank and, the, and there's a draw. Can you see them uh, doing it all again, doing it a third Most time? Most definitely. <laughs> Why not? Hey, it's a good fight. They're both good fighters. Why not? Okay, uh, we'll talk a little bit, little bit more with Alex. I think uh, we're going to pop down now to Gary Newbon at ringside. Okay. Right. First of all, Chris, did you agree it was a draw? Um, it was close. I thought I thought I was the next on the on the boxing, the more boxing. He was punching hard. He was scoring with shots. He um, he's he's uh, he's not the man I thought. Um, I thought I would knock him out. I thought his resilience would go, but. Uh, you know, what a good fighter he is, and uh, I'm glad to have got the draw now. We can do it again. I can, you know, we can 
you know, finally, you know, set the, the, the record straight. I have to say, if the referee didn't take away a point, Nigel Benn would be double champion now. Um, he hit me low about um, three times, three, four times. In the, in the later rounds, he hit me with a low blow. Just after the referee took away a point, he hit me again. Um, you know, it's all to do with fair play. I mean, it's all in the game. It's a draw. We do it again. We earn the money. And hopefully, Nigel can be reasonable and, you know, behave like a gentleman instead of hyping the fight. I mean, yeah, we had a brilliant crowd here tonight, a full house. Um, I really enjoyed playing for this type of crowd um, and I'm, I'm pleased basically to keep my unbeaten record, to keep my WBO World Championship and I'm pleased that we'll probably get, in, get it on again in next, uh, next summer or something. Were you relieved to get a draw though? You looked a bit desperate towards the end of you going flat out to stop him. Oh yeah, I mean, it was a close fight. I knew it was close. Nigel wasn't playing. He was hitting hard. He was, um, um, I basically didn't box. I thought I, should, I thought I would have boxed more, but I didn't. Um, you know, such is life. Still a good performance from my half. Um, good performance from his uh, half and, uh, you know, I haven't got any complaints of a draw. You know, it was right. a close fight. He hit me with some good shots. I hit him with some good shots and, you know, such is life. OK, Chris, now what's happened to Nigel Benn? He's just shot off. We are hoping well, to talk well, to him. Nigel Benn's a little bit disgusted with the decision, but I've come here just to say what a great fight it was on Chris, for Chris Eubanks and for Nigel Benn and for the British public. And I believe that they can get it on again. And uh, I thought my man just nicked it, but that's no disgrace to Chris Eubanks. No way. No, but, no but no. if you hadn't took that point away, as you said earlier on, well, what a great fight, what a great fight, and let's hope they can do it again. Uh, Jimmy Tibbs, you're the trainer, of course. Did you think Nigel actually won? He's disgusted with the verdict. I you think thought he just actually nicked no it. No way, come on, don't, but, don't play uh, that. No, 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 no. He no, didn't I'm, win I'm, this fight, there's no way. If anything, hang on, no. uh, the Chris, I asked you whether you thought it was a draw. I'm just asking Jimmy Tibbs whether Nigel thought he'd won. I, I thought my man just nicked it, but I'm saying if we never took that point away, we would have got the verdict. But... What a great fight. It's come out a good result at the end because they can get together. I'm sure the promoters will do that and everyone will be happy. Well and you're Chris. still unbeaten one way or another. Thank you very much, Chris and Thank Jimmy. You. Karen, love you to death coming home. Indeed, he will be straight down the motorway back, back to the family. Well, I mean, the inference there is very, very clear. We've had a fantastic night here. The next and sometime uh, next year, um, well, they might be doing it all again. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I was pleased to be here. I must say, though, looking, looking there at Chris talking, he, it was a very different sort of fellow to the guy we saw after the last fight. Yeah, I think they've, uh, they've, they know each other a bit better now, and Chris is just being Chris Eubanks. He's a great guy, he's got a great personality, and they both have great personalities, and they're both great guys. Just finally from you, just sum up the week uh, that we've had with yourself, uh, with fighting Frank and this fight here. It's been a fantastic week for boxing. It has been. Uh, it's been a fantastic week for British boxing. Indeed. Lennox, it's been a pleasure for us uh, to have you with us tonight. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for being here. OK. Well, also on the bill here tonight, uh, we had uh, Crisanto Espana from uh, Venezuela defending uh, his title. Espana with a white uh, striper down his trunks, and he stopped Donovan Boucher, the Canadian, the challenger, um, in the 10th round. And Boucher had a pretty rough time. In fact, he was down three times. And next week, in fact, we go to Belfast to see uh, Eamon Lochran. Eamon Lochran against a Gert Bowie Jacobson. Uh, challenging for that WBO 10 stone 7 title and that is ITV next Saturday night. Big dates before then though, Republic of Ireland against Spain, the World Cup qualifier Wednesday afternoon 2.30 on ITV and of course after that, and it's only on this station, Holland against England. England's World Cup destiny will be decided there in Rotterdam. All right, it's been an amazing night here really and we have to really say Good night, you all. I hope you've all enjoyed.